Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another audio topic. And today's topic is something um, that I was meaning to talk to for some time now. I have talked about it briefly in uh, one of my earlier audio, t- audio topic in regarding how we view movies and whether or not uh, the movie theaters um, in the near future will be a thing of the past. Uh, now I'm going to expand upon it, and not only just in um, movies, but in um, music and in video games as well. And the reason why I decided to be the best time to talk about it now is because I'm seeing a very strong pattern now where people are going or going to do to their favorite shop to get their games less and less going to get their music less and less through stores even getting their movies less and less through stores and just either doing streams downloading their games and music uh, their music whether it be by their game um gaming system or entertainment system that they have or even their through their cell phones or tablets in short um they're they're relying less on going to the stores um, to get um, their entertainment, uh, whether it be DVDs, um, CDs, you name it. Um, video game industry is also trying to take advantage of this, uh, where you, it's no longer possible to go, uh, you don't have to go um, to the store and get a game. You can just download it from your gaming system, uh, which has um, a pro and a con to it, and I'll talk about that um, later on throughout this um, audio. Uh, but needed to say is that people are now shopping more online, um, getting their stuff online, than rather than going out and getting it. And uh, like always, um, there is um, some benefits to this, and as well, there is some, um, some things that consumers, gamers, or movie reviewers, or moviegoers alike, should be very concerned about and I'm going to be talking about that um, throughout this uh, audio. Now I want to say this night now there's no right and or wrong answer. Um, where How you get your entertainment is strictly your business. I'm not trying to, say, trying to scare anybody into thinking one way or another. It's just something of a topic discussion that I think a lot of people should be a little bit aware of and um, be more cautious of especially since a lot of people or relying on store servers now more than ever to store their games, their movies, um, even some personal documents. And this is something that's, uh, that's very important um, to know, uh, especially depending on which server you're using. Uh, there is some benefits to having a server because now you know that your stuff um, is, uh, is safely stored somewhere else. Uh, you pay a monthly fee and uh, you have all your stuff, games, whatever, save and it eliminates um, a lot of things. One eliminates you having um, losing um, space in your computer, let alone losing space in your room. Uh, you may not have enough space to, for your room to keep all your uh, movies and your, uh, and your games too, and you may need a storage, um, storage um, server to do that for you. Um, there are server servers out there that does that. Um, there's also the situation where even your own game system um, does it for you. Um, most game systems now have um, built-in GBs, gigabytes, to store your games in. You don't have to buy um, a memory chip anymore. It, it's already there. Um, all the latest game, all the latest um, um, game systems now have that, and also has a special um, service. If you pay into that service, um, or you have online, you can download um, a game straight online um, and play it directly towards your 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 gaming system. Um, online play, playing has become more and more popular uh, with gamers and to the point where some of these games now uh, requires that you have a service to play the game online. Uh, many people like that. It not only um, gets the game to be more enhanced, uh, more playable, but it also has a chance to interact with other gamers online uh, that something that they would never have to do before as if they had two players playing with their friends at home so it expands the gaming experience beyond um, just one room these are all great good options however there's also consequences of that and I might as well talk about the consequences uh, involving the gaming industry and I might as well touch on from PlayStation first because I saw this um, more with the PlayStation uh, in terms of their handheld device. 
uh, I am talking about uh, the PSP Go. And the P in case you won't know, the PSP Go, too many is considered to be a big disappointment, a big flop. But that's largely because of two things. Um, one, a lot of people didn't have the Wi-Fi um, service that you need to require to download the games directly towards the system. And two, and this is probably one of the most important points, retailers wasn't pimping this game out. Um, this is a perfect experience of mine uh, when they first introduced the, the PSP Go. Um, I went to the, st to, the um, to an independent game seller uh, who sell games um, you, uh, new and used as well as game systems and I asked questions regarding the PSP Go. Um, he was very knowledgeable um, I will say he knew his stuff but he also told me one thing that which uh, caught me by surprise. He said, don't buy this game. Um, and I asked a question, what's wrong with it? He said, nothing wrong with it. It's, uh, it's new. Uh, you can download uh, games uh, directly to the, to the PSP Go, uh, but don't buy this game. It's not worth it. And it dawned on me why he said this. Uh, because that was not just him I went to, uh, but, it, but every almost every um, Game um, seller from GameStop to the local um, you know, mom and pop games game stores was saying the same thing: don't buy this game. And it was a reason, and it then it made perfectly good sense why they would um, have a backlash on um, toss this game system. Uh, and that is that they're taking bread and butter away from their st from from their um, from their mouths. Um, they were hurting their business. Uh, <coughs> PSP didn't have a cartridge. PSP didn't have a, a mini disc or any kind of um, disc that requires to play in the game. You're getting it directly towards the PlayStation, PlayStation did themselves. And uh, many stores did not like that because, I don't know if you guys know, 75% uh, of their profits are from selling games. New games, old games, you name it, that's where their money is coming from. Only a fraction of their money is coming from game units and because of that you saw we I saw a huge huge uh, rejection towards the PSP go more so than any other game system period um, there are people prefer I should just buy a Nintendo system with a Sega Genesis and the other uh, and um, Super Nintendo built in there were people selling me that uh, triple com copy <coughs> then buying the PSP go and that's because they can actually sell the used games, which they had a library of, a ton of games for. <coughs> That's not to say that uh, that the PSP Go probably would have worked, but the p point was, store owners wasn't trying to pimp this out. They had it, yes, they, was, they, had, they were selling it, but they wasn't exactly encouraging people to buy it, uh, which is very, very rare. And when you have store owners, it's basically telling your, telling the customers. Um, not to buy something, um, not based because of the bad device, but basically because uh, it's, it basically was um, going to take money away from uh, from them. That's not a good sign. Um, and this ain't the, the gamer in the gaming industry wasn't the one that was suffering from this. A few years ago, um, the the, um, the theaters union was about to strike. It was about to protest um, all the major studios. Um, for moving towards a um, making a move to release newer films, um, not in theaters, but just basically go directly towards your television set. Um, this will happen two weeks after the film was released, and then they will just pull them out and have it on demand. What did that mean? That means that you don't have to go to theaters to watch your movie. You can just pay one monthly fee, and you just get your movies right straight from there. It sounds like a good bargain for the um, for the consumer who no longer have to worry about paying expensive tickets. Um, they can just you know sit, pay one fee, and um, they can get all the new films from the comfort of their home. That did not spell good for a lot of the movie unions, who don't even get enough money, barely get a fraction of the cost of the movie being played in their theaters. Also, their more money is made from concessions. That's why concessions are so damn expensive because they're not making money over the ticket receipts. They probably don't make the money um, until at least the third week after that film is shown. Um, and that's if um, people are still interested in seeing this movie. And this is where 
uh, that fear came from, and they threatened to protest a lot of films. A lot of summer blockbusters was threatened. We may not have Transformers, um, Harry Potter, um, Pirates, all these films that I'm mentioning what was this close to not being seen that year because they was very dead set on keeping those films out of their theaters because they were taking their bread and butter away from them or a reason for people to go in their theaters to buy um, their, you know, their overpriced um, popcorn and soda um, and they was not going to go for that. It was a big rejection. Um, things have quiet down, of course, you don't hear too much, but make no mistake about it, um, the, uh, the studios all looking into that market. They're all looking to cut the middleman. And that was one of the reasons why it prompted me to do that video, that, um, that movie theater um, um, topic, uh, because uh, it is happening. A lot of movies are, two things are happening with the movies that you're seeing. You're seeing A, being played on demand rather than being, being put in theaters, um, Get the Greco was one of them, or uh, being played on demand as an early screening and then being released in theaters. Um, and there's a consequences for that, of course. Um, if the film is bad, people will say something about it, um, resulting people not to go in. Or if it's good, uh, people will talk about it or, and hope to boost, the, the, boost um, the ticket sales for that movie. But either way you're seeing, there's a lot of films that are skipping the theaters. Um, a lot of films that has been made just for the sole purpose of being on demand. And slowly but surely, you're going to start seeing a lot of films be put on demand or being, re being pulled early to be placed as an on-demand movie so people can watch it for the comfort of their home. And um, Hollywood is looking into it, Holly the cash grab. And as always, there's a benefit, but there's also a consequence by, um, by doing that. Uh, and we're seeing that a lot with not just that, we're seeing it a lot with even the games. Um, a lot of games are requiring you to play online. Now, like I said, there's a benefit for this, a very strong benefit. Uh, you get to have, you get to re interact with a community, you get to interact with people who also have the game. What's the disadvantage? The disadvantage is very simple, and I, Angry Joe have brought this up, and a lot of, a lot of um, gamers have brought this up. And I, even I'm bringing it up, and I'm going to say it right straight up. It's kind of hard for me to say that I own a game when I pay for the game, but yet I got to pay a monthly fee to continue to play that game, which I need to play online to really have an experience. If I don't play that monthly fee, I can't play the game. So basically, I paid 60 plus dollars to rent a game, and that's something I, I never really liked, I never really went for. And it also one of the reasons why it kept me away from online gaming because of, because I don't believe that if I paid um, a certain amount of money for a game, a very expensive game, that should be the end of it. I shouldn't have to pay every single month to keep playing that game. After a while, it ruins the experience for me. Um, some people don't have a problem with that, and that's fine. That's that that's your prerogative. Um, if you if you don't have a problem paying. Um, uh, a monthly fee. If, uh, if you felt the fee is reasonable, then that's um, that's to each his own. You are entitled for that. That's fine. But for me, if I pay for something, that should be it. And that's the whole thing about um, this new trend that's going on. Um, if I don't have a physical copy of a game or a movie uh, or even a music, can I actually say that I own that uh, piece of property? And the and to me it all depends. If you can save it on a on a on a disc or a UABS drive or any kind of hard drive, then that's one thing. But if you don't have it saved, and God forbid something happened to your computer, something happened to your server, uh, and uh, they don't to do they will they reimburse you? Some people said at place at the PSP, um, they do uh, reimburse people for that. That's f and that's cool. But they, what about the other gaming companies that, um, that uh, may fall in a similar situation, or movie companies for that matter? Will they reimburse the burst you? And that's the thing um, that I'm always worried about. I do not want to be in the mercy of a company. I do not want to, to, to buy a game and I don't physically own that game. Um, and the same thing goes with relying on servers. Again, there, now before I even go further, there have been some servers 
way before um, even gaming, the way the gaming were and how um, certain uh, movies are, there has been servers before. And there's a reason. Most companies rely on uh, on servers to hold very t um, important materials, materials that cannot fall into the hands of anybody else. Um, sometimes when you, when people do work, um, it goes directly towards that server and not in their computer. Um, some places are not allowed to have um, to have important sensitive documents on the computer, and that's uh, justifiably so. Um, but they have a special server for that. Um, company server is a little bit different. You're not really because most people are using it, they're using it for um, storing music, um, movies, um, TV shows, whatever. And you got to ask yourself, um, is it worth the if it worth the monthly fee? Now again, there's an advantage for that. It, it doesn't. It takes the burden of saving a lot of stuff in your computer. It takes the burden of having to buy all this stuff um, and keeping it in in um, in in your house, knowing where you may not go back and watch it um, anytime soon. So it is an advantage of that. The disadvantage of it is this: What happens if you start if you can't no longer pay the monthly fee that's required for you to keep the server? What happens is the company belly up. That can't happen. It has happened on number occasions. What happened to all your stuff that you have saved? Do you still got that stuff, or that stuff is gone forever? That's something that um, that can frustrate a lot of people because they have spent a lot of money, and they have stored on this server, hoping, keeping on faith that is that is going to be there once they click back on. And that's something that I think a lot of people are still a little bit hesitant to do. They don't want to be in the mercy of a server that can be there one minute and gone the next. Um, other people don't have a problem with that. They say they pay their monthly fee. Um, they also said, well, I got a backup plan. I save a lot of um, stuff on my special US, um, USB drive. I don't have to worry about that. If it's not there, I still got it and I can just you know, go to another server and save it from there. Funny thing is, if you have a USB, you don't really need um, a very good USB, by the way. You don't really need the uh, to go to other other venue to save your stuff, but people do do it, and um, I kind of understand um, why. But in any case, these are some of the stuff that I very, really do hope that a lot of people take into consideration, because, like I said, our way of getting entertainment is changing. Some for the good, some for the bad. Um, there's going to be resistance to change. Some justifiably so because, as you notice, um, in New York especially, there is less and less music stores, um, and that's largely because people are just not buying CDs anymore. Um, that's largely because CDs are expensive. CDs start, are still within the 15 to 18, sometimes the 30 dollar range, depending on what CD you're getting. But uh, people are not uh, is not doing it anymore. They just said, you know what, the hell with it. I'll just get it online, put it in my iPod, and I'm good to go. Um, there are some people who are just, you know, saying, you know, I go to the movie theaters, I'm just, you know, streaming from here and I'm good to go. Um, so our change, our, our attitude is changing. Um, the stores are, are not uh, around as much anymore. And to be even surprised, theaters are just clinging to life right now. Um, very clinging to life. And if it doesn't have a good supporting community, a lot of these theaters, especially in New York, I got, I got to stress this more because New York used to be the movie theater um, district. Not anymore, um, and that's largely because a lot of theaters are closing shop. All this left the states all entirely. Um, it's not going to happen. Change is not going to happen overnight, of course. Um, it may take years and years before we finally see that big move, but we're seeing it. Um, they're now even talking about the possibility of having games that are being put on CDs as a thing of the past. Uh, we're just it's going to be a system. And then, by the way, this has happened before, but it was way ahead of its time where you're going to have a game system where you don't buy the CDs, you got to get it directly online, um, and, uh, and you got to pay either by debit or credit card um, to get that game. Um, this has been an idea before, um, but the point was, in between um, that idea they had way back then and now is that the fact is, people, the, the, um, the people wasn't, grown-ups especially, was not into games as much as they are now. And to the idea of spending a lot of money on your credit card, not many people own a credit card, let alone a debit card back then. A credit card was a lot more harder back in the 80s to get um, than it is now. Um, there are, and most people who don't can't get credit cards just have a debit card and they just work from there. Um, so there you go. 
So there's, there's a lot of stuff that's happening, and um, <clears throat> the gaming industry is, is, is aware of it, um, and they have been rebelling in their own way. Um, the movie, the, the movie um, industry, um, the theaters especially, is aware of it, and they have rebelled in their way. Um, and even TV, um, t the way we look at television now is not the same. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't rely on too much television, free or cable. Uh, most of my entertainment actually been coming through YouTube from YouTube personalities, so uh, that's how that, that's how that thing goes. But uh, like I said, um, it really all depends. But I like to hear your opinion on this too. I like to hear your opinion on this. Uh, where do you see uh, the future in terms of entertainment? Do you think that you st we will be around still? Um, that your kids will be around? Um, and CDs will still be a factor in terms of entertainment. I don't think there is. I think CDs are slowly phasing out. Um, do you see theaters still still um, playing a big role in how people get the entertainment first? Do you even see um, video games um, having you know the having the traditional CDs or cartridges, um, or you see a, you're going to see a PlayStation game system where you got to go online to get the games? Um, so I'd like to hear what your opinion on this. Um, there is no right or wrong answer. I'd like to hear your guys' opinion. Um, and until then, um, this is J77 saying take care, be safe, I'll talk to you soon.